Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. Hello to everyone around our beautiful planet. Welcome to Dr. Catherine May's Blog Talk Radio Program Channel Panel. Today is Sunday, November 2nd, 2014. And today is our special healing call with Sananda and our Arcturian friends and their loving ships they have to help us heal. This is your co host, Meg calling in from Georgia, and our host, Catherine, is calling in from her home in High Falls, New York. Hi, Catherine. It's, um, oh, there I am. Sorry. I didn't realize my line wasn't open. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, everybody. Well, it's November 2nd already, and here it's windy and cold and Upstate New York, but we still have not had a real frost. And this is the first time in all of my years that I can remember that the tomatoes are still on the vine. The flowers are still blooming in my garden. It's a very strange thing to have had no frost, but we have had Indian summer. (laughs) Usually there's a frost first. But things are definitely changing on the planet, that's for sure. So anyway, that's uh, just a small weather update. Um, Sananda will be coming today. And I do have some requests for healing. Um, I'll I'll let him speak first, and then we'll see what what he says about that. Um, It's been a... A very interesting and in some ways difficult week. Everyone knows I resigned from channeling messages, and I said until the RV is produced because it had been promised. And since then, I've been in constant contact with Sananda and with the other Company of Heaven. And I have come to understand a great deal about how they operate, about what their restrictions are, about what we can reasonably expect, and about what really seemed to us that they were misleading us. Um, I've said this in other places, but I'll repeat it now briefly. I was very moved and touched when I talked with Sananda about this and they said they all said you know we understand why you know it seems like we deserve a beating but they really do have our best interests at heart they truly want the RV to take place and uh, contrary To what we have always believed, they cannot just snap a finger and make things happen. It takes tremendous effort on their part. It takes real planning, um, a tremendous amount of energy, and cooperation. And they have been trying everything to make this happen. And 
each time there was someone who would step in, and often an, uh, from an unexpected source, <coughs> and they were not able, the people on the ground were not able to make it happen. So it is not their intention, and it's not their fault. There have been some really dark ones who've been trying to stop this, of course. And it isn't as simple as we thought, but they're on it. Um, the thing that was interesting, I think it's okay if I talk about this. Is it okay, Sananda? Yes. There is a senator who in the U.S. who was apparently paying people off to make trouble. So each time, but not doing it himself. So each time there was, we got to the point where they truly believed the RV was going to be the next day and they would say something about it, it's happening. There would be a glitch in the works. And they have used, uh, I don't want to talk about too much here, um, they have used a very mm, creative way to determine who the people are that are getting in the way and to encourage them, shall we say, to stop what they're doing. And it seems to be working. So they had to narrow it down to eliminate you know, from top to bottom, everyone who was getting in the way by changing their minds, basically, because, of course, they don't just bump people off um, as much as there, there are times when we sort of wish they would, but they don't do that. First of all, it's against universal law. And anyway, they're not inclined to do those kinds of things. There is a more than we understand a pervasive and absolute respect for free will. Even the free will of all the dark ones. They will not intervene in a destructive way because everyone is supposed to have their ability to express their free will. Well, we see now where that's led. Um, things have gotten darker and darker and the, it has created a um, a kind of warp in the energies is what they describe to me that they now have to deal with and get through. So I want to encourage everyone from this side to bear down, get into your hearts, do your meditations, do your ascension exercises, you, for yourself. Reach down Find the strength in yourself. Overcome any tendency to be argumentative, to be in doubt, to be in anger or resentment, self-doubt, or despair. And I know that the last week has created a lot of confusion and even despair among people. And I sincerely apologize for that. I truly regret that I used the words that they have lied to us because I am now completely sure that that was not the case because they have given me the picture of what was really at stake and what was really going on. They weren't eager to tell us how hard it is because they didn't want to frighten anybody. But the answer to all of this is we need to help and we need to not get caught up in oh we're being asked to give up our free will or we're being asked to everybody think the same way or we have to fight back because we don't want to be uh, under mind control or all these things that have come up on our Facebook page that light workers are sharing with one another let me just talk about that for a moment. We set up the group page so that people could meet each other and so that 
we could work together using the tools that I have been taught because that's what I do. It's my page. Gabriella has created it and she has overseen it. And she is, you know, my right hand person. We work together on everything. So she sincerely wished to create a place where people could get together to discuss the ways that they're using the materials that I was cranking out, you know, (laughs) dozens of messages, hundreds and hundreds of messages, the book, Who Needs Light, the um, radio shows and so on. Well, Sananda spoke to me and said, you know, it's, it's not working. People like the messages, they read it, and that's the end of it. It hasn't helped anyone to ascend. And this is what we want to do. We want to help people to ascend. But the darkness is so pervasive and so tempting. Here's what happens on the Facebook page. I make a post or Gabriella posts something, and there's always a flood well, I've read this stuff, and I'm not so sure. And, you know, we all have differing opinions about things, and people ought to respect our differing opinions. And it's important for us to follow our own path. Everybody has their own path, and they're entitled to pursue it. Well, of course, of course, I never argued with that. I just don't want them to pursue doubt and unfriendly comments and attacks and so on, on my page. Well, that was always misunderstood to be, um, well, you're just trying to control us, or uh, that's not what we meant, or this is not an attack. We're just questioning, and we're entitled to question. And the darkness just got deeper and thicker And the poor admin group who are just devoted and hardworking had to work full time to put a stop to this wave of darkness that was overcoming the page. We have not been taught in our lives here how to identify what darkness is. I think the simplest way to put it, is anything that gets in the way of your connection with one. Anything that creates doubt, that stirs up dissension among others, and I apologize that my phrase, they lied to us, or something like that, stirred up a lot of this doubt in people. I'm so sorry. Because I didn't realize what they were up against. And when I look at what's going on on the page, I understand. Because that one comment created a firestorm of resentment, um, even hatred, insulting comments. And I know there are many who who are having doubts. Well... Doubts may be a natural um, part of the growth, a natural part of your ascension process. You have to express them. You have to overcome it. But you don't overcome doubt by tearing other people down. And so we've decided to close the group page because it just is not productive and it was just too much time and energy for all the beautiful light workers that were being inundated with expressions of doubt and anger and uh, this kind of defensive position, the position of defending individuality. Well, okay, individuality is what we came here for, to learn. And it's what we're expected to overcome, not to become belligerent every time there's a suggestion that, you know, maybe 
raise our consciousness and um, I have to apologize there will be a lot of phone call you know beat on the phone because election time is coming up and we get lots of calls about that so please bear with me um, yes individuality is a lovely thing but we're at the place now where our ascension requires that we drop that defensive stance. You can't, uh, you can't brainwash me. You can't uh, take me over. You, well, we don't need to do that to defend ourselves. We need to go in inward. We don't need to make a show about independence and diversity. That's already been done. It's a good thing, yes, but it's not. What we're looking for now, what we're looking for now is to learn how to rise above that and how to express genuine love, which requires that we be willing to move toward the feeling and experience of group consciousness. Now, to some people that sounds frightening because it sounds like you're going to lose yourself. Well, no. Not at all. You gain a connection to higher levels of being. And in those higher levels, we don't need an ego, which is independence. We don't need to defend ourselves against experiencing oneness. It is the heart and the breath of what it means to be human and to ascend to a higher level. So I ask everyone on this call and those who will be listening later to take a deep breath, to drop the defensiveness, the feeling that you have to protect your separateness. If you wish to protect your separateness, that's okay. You can do that, but that's not ascension, and it's not light work. So we are in a place now where planet Earth is ascending, and she is ascending into group consciousness, a higher level than what we've been used to. If we want to go with her, we will have to readjust our thinking. We will have to find a way through that trap that that brings up fear. Anytime you think about joining with others in a close and intimate way that involves joining in a way of thinking that includes all beings, It's not the opposite of individuality, but it is a higher level. And that's what we're reaching for when we talk about ascension, when we talk about enlightenment. And there are so many misunderstandings and so many misuses of the terminology. For instance, Ascension, raising your vibration, doesn't mean you feel good. That feeling good is a, a, a result of ascending. It's not the goal. So feeling good is fine, but that's not ascension. Ascending means you open your heart and your mind to be in direct contact with Sananda, with our other ascended masters, and directly to one. And to feel the energy. It's all about energy. To feel the energy of love. Nothing else. If you're not feeling the energy of love, you're not on track. It's really kind of simple. 
So if you're feeling you have to go to some Facebook page and do combat to defend yourself or to defend diversity and individuality, well, we've done that already. On the way to this ascension. Now, if we can all raise our vibration, we will have a state in which we don't need to defend diversity. It's simply accepted. It's a given. In this higher level of consciousness, there is no disrespect for individuality or diversity. There is no disrespect for another person's feelings. But in that state, we don't have to defend our ideas. And we are expected to manage our feelings. And so when you're managing your feelings, you will not approach another being with anything but love. If it doesn't create light around you, then it is not ascension and it is not light work. And if you're not passing the torch, the lighted torch, that makes the other person either turn their attention away from their isolation or helps them to feel love if they're capable of it. If that's not what you're generating, then you can't claim to be a light worker. We must be truthful with ourselves. This is the hard work we're being asked to to do now. To be rigorous in our expression of love, in our work to reach deep, and clear away all those old feelings so that we can reach higher, so that we can evolve into truly a higher form of being. Not just a happier 3D human, but a higher species. Where there is no conflict and competition or fear, we must conquer our fear. And that is the antidote to all of the troubles we're experiencing right now and to reaching our ascension individually, to helping the company of heaven to accomplish what we say we want and to finding peace within our own hearts. I truly love this work. I have truly loved doing these shows, writing the messages. I asked Sananda yesterday. I actually had a six-hour conversation with him. And I asked him, is it true that every single message was pure and had no darkness anywhere in it? And he said, absolutely. Everyone is pure. And everyone carries with it the light energy from Sananda from Mother, Father, God, from Prime Creator, and from One, and all the other masters who came to offer their help. Everyone carries the message of light. They are all there on the website, in the archives. There are hundreds and hundreds of messages. Every one, the step, up the ladder that we all need. But we need to use it, not just enjoy reading it and say that was nice and then go on with your day. So I've been asked by Sananda 
to take time off to work on my own ascension. And we are all being asked to do that now. We've been given all the tools we need. They're all there. They are constantly sending us love. The energies from the central sun are washing across the planet. The problem now is the fight against it. The fear that people are feeling that if they raise their vibration, if they truly become their authentic self, that bad things will happen. I know this because I've worked, I've done this work as a psychologist for almost 40 years. Actually, yes, for 40 years. And this is the kernel that people struggle against. So if I allow myself to see the truth, to speak my own truth, people will attack me, people won't like me, I'll lose my friends, my family will reject me. Well, perhaps some will. And if they do, then you'll find out that they weren't a good friend to begin with. Even if it is your brother or your mother or your cousin. We tried to create a family here. But we didn't intend to have a family that squabbles and always needs to be reassured. We need to each do our own work. And this is what Sananda has impressed upon me. They do not want me to bring more messages because it gives the impression that we haven't done enough or that there's more that you need to learn or that by listening to these messages you can be raised up. It creates a kind of uh, temptation toward dependence, toward following someone, whether it's Sananda or it's me or it's some version of God, we cannot follow any one person. We can absorb the light that they offer us. We can absorb the sense of knowing that we have this in ourselves. We have the ability to raise our consciousness. We've been given all the tools we need. I am not leaving. I'm not rejecting anyone, and neither is the company of heaven. They are not abandoning us. They are not refusing to help us. Just the opposite. They're saying, now it's time for you to fly. It's time for you to grab hold of what you've been given. Absorb it. Take it into your heart. Use it. And this is what we mean by individual work. Take it into your heart. Let your bodies be filled with light and accept the love that they're sending to us. I apologize to the company of heaven for falling into a a pattern that says I need it in the way that I need it or the people around me need it. Well, yes, we do. We do need to see the flat-out, obvious, concrete evidence that what they've promised us will happen. Yeah, we do need that. But in the meantime, we have been given such a gift, such a constant gift of loving attention. I, for one, have decided that for me, that's enough. 
I don't need to see concrete evidence, although I'll be happy when it happens. I will cheer for joy when the blessings are released and when the coming landings happen. I'm not going to demand a date or a time because I know it's already happened. There, along the timeline, it has already happened, but we have to bring it to us. So I ask you all, join together, create the pillar of light that will break through the darkness. Let's help the landings to happen. Let's create a vortex of light and clear energy to help bring the ships to us, to help channel the love and light from the company of heaven to each of us. That's our work now, to turn it around, to overcome the darkness with our own light, And I now understand that we cannot do this by uh, putting on more radio shows or creating more messages because it's all there. It's all there. And every message is filled with light and love. You only need to imbibe it and you will feel it. And when you get used to feeling it, you will discover that they're sending it to you every minute, every minute of every day. Feel it pouring down through your crown chakra, down past your pineal gland, your third eye, through the center of your brain, where all thoughts and feelings are registered. Bring them all into the light. All thoughts, all feelings must pass the test of matching that energy of light that they send you. That will raise you to a very high level. It's our job now to raise ourselves up to their energy level. That's what they're telling us we need to do. Use their energy as the model for what you want to experience inside yourself. Not just a few minutes a day. Not just when you read a message, but every minute. Keep restoring it. Keep feeling it. I've posted on YouTube a meditation. It's not there are a few glitches in it, but I think it'll it'll help. Um, it's a a message to help overcome any darkness, to clarify and reach for your deep, permanent connection to one. I hope it helps. We'll post the link on the tour page and on the website. I will maintain the website. We'll put out our new website. Um, It'll be easier if I'm not doing a message every day (laughs) or a radio show. So I'll let Sananda discuss that, um, what the future holds and what people will be finding in our um, offerings. So, this is good news, is it not? They're saying to us, it's time. We've gone through that period of learning about the company of heaven, of experiencing their energy. Now they're saying, join us. You've done all that. Now, join us. Raise yourself up. 
to where they are. And what a pleasure that's going to be to meet them when they come to us to experience the energy of connection every day of your life from now on. It's pure pleasure. Not what we're used to, not what we thought we had to do, but definitely worth it. So I welcome with great love our Sananda. I'm going to step aside and give him the space to come in and talk with us, to give us a sense of what he feels the direction should be now, I'm sure he'll have more to say about what I've introduced. Okay. So I will now get out of the way and let Sananda come through. All right, Catherine. I'll provide just a few minutes Mm -hmm. for you to take take a deep breath and... Reach for your beautiful connection with our brother and friend. Welcome, Sananda. Thank you for coming today. Thank you, dear Meg. Yes, today I will bring to you what I hope will be an uplifting message. I thank Catherine for her introduction and for her years of hard work. I have asked her to take some time off now for her to work on her own ascension. She spent so much time, as has Gabriella, trying to help others. But now it's time for her to turn to her own work, for we need her. We want her. To join us. And she cannot be continuing this schedule of day in and day out offerings for others and still be able to spend the time to reach inward, to spend time with us, as everyone needs to do now. For every time you call to us, Every time you sit in meditation and absorb our energies, you are ascending. Every time you open your heart, every time you hear the vibration of my voice that I send to you, It is the vibration of my being that I wish to use to touch your heart, to help uplift you. It is my only wish. It is my work. It is what I love. To be in love with you. And yet, it has become harder and harder to find a way through the layer upon layer of illusion. Planet Earth has been subject to this illusion for a long time. But in recent months, it has become thicker and you might call it stickier and more difficult to break through. You're behind many layers of illusion. I ask you now to do the work of peeling away those layers 
upon layers of illusion. You have been told that this life, this um, three-dimensional life that you live is an illusion. It's true, but perhaps not in the way you think it is. The things that you do, the feelings you express, those are real. Your interactions with others, those are very real. If you say a hurtful thing to another being, that is very real. If you send love, if you reach out, that is real. The illusion is that you're here in a body and that's all there is to it. Or this experience on planet Earth in the lower dimensions is what life is. That is an idea that so many were caught up in. It's what most religions have taught. It's what you have all thought, except for those few of you who managed to keep a connection with us. You thought you were alone here. You thought we had abandoned you because those are the illusions that were presented to you in the form of teaching. You've been taught not to trust us, not to rely on us, not to believe in us because you can't see us or touch us. Well, you will feel our presence if you want to. If you open your heart and your mind, you will feel my presence. If you ask me to come to you, I will do so. And I will present you with an electrical charge that will make it unmistakable for you you'll feel what you might think of as a shiver or a a tickle in your nervous system. This is how we alert you to our presence. This is how we send you messages. Oh, there are so many that you don't even know are coming from us. But they are always of the light. They will always help to awaken you. For that is our goal, expansion. To help you expand your mind. Yes, your mind is important because if you don't expand your mind, if you don't attend to the kinds of thoughts you have, you will be tripped up by it. Because the levels and levels of illusion on your planet have all been taught to you. Yes, you are presented with this place where you feel things and they feel solid. Where you have learned to believe only in your five senses. That is the illusion for it gives you not a fraction of the true picture. There are levels and levels and levels of life beyond this experience. There are throngs, billions of beings who are experiencing life in various conditions various life forms. There are the humanoids like you and there are many others. Many, many, many other life forms with consciousness. All 
in this process of learning, all in the process of awakening. You happen to be in a a lower level now because this is what you chose. When you came here, you wanted the experience of this lower dimension. And now we ask you, are you willing to move higher? Are you willing to leave this illusion that you are the body you're in? Yes, the body is precious. It was a gift to you. And we expect you to take good care of it, to respect it, to love, and care for it the way you would a beloved child. This is what we have taught. This is what Meg has brought to you in the form of her Eating for Ascension Guide. This is what these healing shows have been all about. You heal with love. Not just my love. Let me tell you something about the healings that I did when I was here in a body. When someone came to me, there would be people who would come forward and touch my robe. And in doing that, they would heal. Did I heal them? Not really. I presented light and love directly to them. And in feeling that, they lifted their own hearts and decided to be well. They decided to leave behind the illusion of illness and injury. You see, this is one of the great illusions in this dimension. That you are vulnerable and susceptible to all kinds of disease and there's nothing you can do about it. It's not true. Even in this plane, healing is possible. Life, the feeling of a desire to live and be strong in this body heals. It heals injury. It heals disease. And it heals the kinds of mental illnesses that you describe, despair, depression, anxiety. Those are learned within the illusion. Some of you call it the matrix. It's a good description because it's not just one layer of illusion that you're here in a body and that's all there is to it. That's only one layer. Along with that, the the idea that if you can't touch it and see it and measure it, it doesn't exist. Well, that's simply not true. That's part of the illusion. This, beloved ones, is what you must find a way out of. We are here for you. We walk beside you always. There is not a moment that you have been abandoned. Every one of you has a guide. You can ignore your guide and say, nobody cares about me. But that doesn't make it true. And your guides and your angels are trained to stay with you no matter what. Even if you reject them. Even if you say horrid things about them. They will not abandon you. I will not abandon you. I agreed to come here to help people ascend 
and I've agreed to these teachings to help all of you lift yourselves out of this illusion. First, spiritually. That is the key. And then, after you have accomplished the spiritual elevation that lifts you out of the belief that this is all there is, then we begin with your physical ascension. You're all being helped. You're being sent. The waves of energy that will convert your DNA into a crystalline state, which is necessary to be able to raise your bodies to a higher level. That is the goal that you can all ascend and take your bodies with you to a higher level so that you can remain with Gaia and create the paradise on earth that you've always wanted, that you have envisioned together. This is group consciousness. It is not giving up your individuality if you can no longer pollute the earth. It is not giving up your true self if you can't be allowed to say awful things to people and pretend that you're being a light worker. That is not a right. It is not a right to hurt anyone's feelings, even your own. It is not a right for anyone else To feel free, as you call it, freedom of speech. This is not freedom of speech. It is simply meanness and low vibration. Freedom means you can raise yourself to a higher level of love. That is freedom. That is what you have been tricked into turning your back on by the illusion. And so now it is your work to find your way, to peel away those layers of illusion, to reach for a higher level of existence, And to do that for a few moments or a few days, each of you will have to simply follow the energy level, the sense of enlightenment that comes with reaching higher. Even if you can't see your guide, his or her face, you will feel their presence. Even if you sense there may be an angel around you, but you don't see it, that is where faith comes in. You're not being asked to believe something that isn't real. Just because you can't touch it doesn't mean it isn't real. The stars are real. You believe that but you can't touch them. We are real. And we are here for you. We are your guides and helpers. We dedicate ourselves in service to you. I, Sananda, am in service to all of you. There are some people who ask to be healed today. I'm going to to read their names for I can look through Catherine's eyes. They have asked to be healed. Now I have already told you I cannot heal you. I can give you the 
the model for the energy that you can take on for yourself to heal yourself. And to do that, you must be resolute, you must be determined, and you must not quit. Here is a very good example. Our dear Daryl. He says, for many years he had to do just what was required to survive. He didn't get involved with anyone because he didn't have the financial means to do so. He has a sharp temper because of sickness and abuse, and he wants to curtail it. Everything over the years has accumulated, and he requires healing and a way out. He wants to create, be happy, and prosper, and to turn on the light and go forward. And now, here is the key. He says he is asking for healing light on everything concerned. Daryl, we can do that. We can shed our healing light, but it will not heal you. You must be willing to take it in yourself. You must be willing to accept the help you've been given, to absorb it with conviction with determination, with the refusal to believe that you cannot manage your own anger. Of course you can. There may have been plenty of things that made you angry in life. That's a given here. Everyone experiences things that make them angry. It's part of our growth and our elevation to learn that expressing that anger over and over and over again does not allow you to heal. Past abuses keep you captive if you remain angry about them. Go to your heart. Find that place in your heart where you can turn your eyes outward and forward to see the possibility of a bright and beautiful future, where together you join with other light workers in love. There is no need to hide yourself out of shame or fear. Go forth. Do something to express love. Smile at a child. Do something to make another feel good. It's all right. There is no danger in that. That is where the truth lies. That there is more to this life than the injuries you've experienced. There's more to this life than the insults and the abuses you have felt. Raise your consciousness to understand this has been a training ground, a drama that you played your part well in. But it was designed to help you to arrive at this point. All of it. Every time the rug got pulled out from under you is an opportunity to reach higher. Every time someone says something that you bridle at, turn inward. Find the peace within you in your connection with me. In that connection with me, there is peace, there is joy, and it is eternal. 
It cannot be broken. It cannot be destroyed. It is there for you always. You do not need to feel that you are a victim of the dark energies around you. As soon as you go into that feeling of feeling like a victim, you have strengthened the dark energies because now you're playing their game. This we want to teach you This is why we have given you Catherine's book. It will help you. Read it. Every page. Because every page is imbued with love and light. It is our gift to you. Use these tools we have given you. We will not continue the healing shows every week because we've already healed you. We have healed every person who came to these shows. You just don't know it because you're caught in an illusion. There have been many healings, many. Many people who accepted that they can take this on themselves, this sense of love and light and healing energy. And they can lead themselves out of that dark illusion that you cannot do it yourself. Mary, Mary Stevenson, please send healing to my left knee. It keeps her in great pain, but she knows it was created at a very negative walk with the dark night. Okay? You took it on. Now it's time to do what you need to do to reverse that. And you've even said it yourself. What you need is love and forgiveness for yourself. Yes, and don't believe the doctors who tell you it's forever. They're always happy to see you come back to their office so that you can line up in the <coughs> in the sitting room and bring your money to them. No. Refuse. Break out of the illusion. Claim yourself. Claim your own health, and you will be healed. Kumar put his name in for healing earlier. Oh, I think this may have to be. Yes. We remember Kumar. Uh, No improvement took place. It seems I need more healing. Yes, you do. So get to it. We already healed you once. No number of times you could come back. You could come back a hundred times and you won't feel healed unless you decide that you are going to heal and that that will be your experience of life in a higher dimension. Here's one for a, from a friend, from Cynthia, for her friend Maureen. She's suffering from Parkinson's disease, disease, and she wants her friend to be healed. Have your friend listen to the shows. Give her the archives. Let her listen to our encouragement to take command of your own healing. Yes, we are helping. We do everything in our power 
to raise you up, to show you our love. We cannot heal you if you do not agree. You see, there are many who came to the shows who were genuinely healed. But as soon as they realized they were healed, they began to say, well, am I really healed? How can that be? Oh, no, I'm sure I still have this thing, and I'll have to go back next week and do it some more. So you see, the secret is within you. The way to heal, to recover, to join us, is to do it. And to do that, you may need to spend time in meditation. You may need to reaffirm for yourself that you are part of us, that we are part of you. And in that, in that loving energy, you will be healed. And so, Dennis, for his wife and friend, Brenda. His wife has glaucoma. He's been using Reiki, Reiki and um, her eyes are, are red and swollen. She needs healing for the glaucoma. Well, she needs to come here. She needs to come to the show. And she needs to understand that glaucoma is a part of the result of feeling anxiety and fear. It is caused by the uh, contracting in one's brain of the blood vessels by pressure on the eyes from the feelings of pain and anxiety. When you use the method we've described as visual centering to move back into your brain, into the center of your brain, to let go of your poor eyes and let them rest, Move back into that place where you see with your third eye, where you feel with your intuition, and where we are present with you in your light chamber. That is your internal channel of light. There, you generate healing. Now, here's her, their friend Brenda, who has a hidden aneurysm, the doctors think. She had a slight headache, so, well, she thinks it's her sinuses. We gave the exercise last week, how to cure sinuses. Let her listen to that program. Let her use this information herself. These doctors are simply guessing if you have a headache, it must be a hidden aneurysm. Well, that way, it's understandable why they can't see it. And they can't tell you what's actually wrong with you, because they don't know. And if you believe that you have a hidden aneurysm, well, you probably will cause your brain to explode and bleed. That's not necessary. Simply learn to breathe more gently. As Catherine taught on the last show, we have given you everything you need, beloved ones. Everything you need. You only need to connect with our hearts to your heart. And when you do that, You will live in love. There will be no need for long explanations 
or cheerleading, as you've called it. Not when you're connected with us. You know our love then. You know we are with you always. You won't need reassurance. You won't even need proof, although we are working very hard to bring it to you. You will indeed have the proof. But don't wait for that. Test yourself. Stretch yourself. Challenge yourself. See how far you can move in the next three hours in the direction of lifting yourself to a higher level, a higher level of consciousness where doubt and all forms of ego and the pain it brings can melt away. You are light, beloved ones. You are made in the image of God. Do you know what that means? We are made in the image of God as well. Yes, we have our warts and we have our struggles because each of us is trying to reach the level to be one with God even if you had a fall back even if you stubbed your toe pick yourself up brush yourself off and reach for your connection to me Sananda and I will join hands place your hand in the hands of God I will be there to show you the light. I am always there to point you in the direction of light. I cannot drag you. I would not do that, for you have free will. None of your masters will force you to ascend. That is not our wish. It is not even permissible. We cannot make your life better. We can offer you the light and the love. We can create the conditions all around you. Yes, there is darkness in your world. You will need to work hard to protect yourselves and to not get off, get caught up in it. That is your work. That is what you came here to do. To break through the illusion. To come back to us. That is the work of ascension. You can do it. We reach to you. We hold out our hands to you. We beckon to you. We feel your hearts. We feel your sadness. We feel your desperation. We reach to you. Can you stretch out your hand? Can you open your heart? Can you forgive us for not being the perfect gods that you wanted us to be? For we do not match the description you've heard in your Bible and your religious teachings. We are like you. Yes, we have more light, more energy. But it is the rule of the universe. You have free will. You must make your own choices. We will not make them for you. 
we will hold the light. And it is your work, as Catherine invited you to do, to light your torch, hold it high, and move, move, one step at a time, toward us. We embrace you. We love you without end. We are in service to you every moment of our days. If I could pull you with my heartstrings from where you are into my embrace, I would do so. And those of you who feel the welcoming embrace, come. You do. You come and receive my embrace. This is how you will ascend. Feel the connection in your heart. Feel your heartstrings that connect you to one You can have more than one heartstring. You have many. You can connect to me. You can connect to your ancestors. You can always, you must connect to one. And together, we send our energy to draw you higher, to lift you toward us. But you must accept it. That's it. That's all there is to it. We've given you everything in terms of tools, messages, techniques, meditations. It's all there. There's magic in the messages that we've sent you. There's magic in the book and in the technique of visual centering. But as Catherine has discovered, she teaches it. People learn it. And then they toss it aside and go on just as they were before. Beloved ones, that is not a failing of the techniques or the messages. It is a choice. Elevate yourselves. And we are here to embrace you, to love you as you have never experienced love before. The love that we feel is nothing like what you experience there on earth. Don't try to make it feel like the love you've had for a partner who who keeps you waiting or or who says disrespectful things to you and then you have to apologize and make up. We are here to send you pure love. Not the kind that makes your heart ache. Not the kind that destroys you and reduces your energy. That is not love. You have clung to the illusion of love to the point where you reject us because it doesn't feel the same. It doesn't tear at your heart. It doesn't force you to give up yourself. That is not love. What we send to you is at a higher vibration. It is pure. 
and it goes directly to the place in your heart that will allow you to feel love toward yourself and to everyone around you. Feel it like a warm bath, like a an embrace that surrounds you, enveloping every cell, every fiber of your being. Let it melt into you and let it change you. Let it open your eyes to something brighter, something real, more real than what you can touch with your five senses, more real than what you see around you, more real than the experiences you've had of what you call love. Raise yourself up, and you will know pure love. And then you will not want to settle for anything less. You won't feel longing. You won't feel heartbroken if an old friend decides they don't want to be around you because you're, you've changed. That's all right. There's nothing to be heartbroken about. It wasn't love anyway. We are here for you. We adore you. But it is not the kind of adoration that your advertising presents to you. It's not sugar-coated. It's not tinged with mm, what hedonistic excitement. It is love. Now, there are no words that can express to you any more than what I've already said. There is no way of convincing you that there is an entire world here behind the veil waiting for you to experience it. An entire world of brightness, light, exquisite energies, companionship, beyond anything you have imagined. A sense of being together that goes far beyond anything you've experienced there in the lower dimensions. A connection that is golden thread that can never be broken. That vision I hold for you. I will continue to hold that vision for you as I encourage every one of you who is willing to join me in that. Your Catherine will be joining me. We have work to do. Come with us. We welcome you. Beyond the veil, beyond the illusion, beyond the feelings of loneliness, fear, despair, separation, self-doubt, anger, all of that, Wrap it up in a great big sheet. Tie the knot on the sheet and drop it. Drop it off the side of the planet. 
for Earth is ascending, leave it behind in the third dimension. You will not be needing it. That is my message to you, beloved ones. I wish you great love. I send you endless love. I invite you to come with us beyond the veil, beyond the illusion, to create the paradise you have envisioned. Together, we will do that. I am your Sananda. Namaste, all. Namaste. Thank you, Sananda. Thank you. And I am coming. I am counting myself in. (laughs) I just thought I'd throw that in there. (laughs) Oh, yes. And I hear everybody yelling on the call. We are in. We are coming, Sananda. (laughs) Yes. I saw a vision as he was talking. The veil in front of us and beyond it, the entire universe. Here we are in this little tiny place that is the third dimension. And it was like he pulled back the curtain and there was endless, endless colors and light and beings of all shapes and sizes doing all kinds of things, (laughs) stars and planets and brightness and space and joy and people flying. (laughs) (laughs) And here we were like sitting in a little corner with our pencil. (laughs) <laughs> and our nose is almost on the page or our computer and our <laughs> and right there behind the curtain is this entire universe <laughs> and the curtain is right there just where our fingertips are that's the curtain and all we have to do is pull it back and it's like Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Was that there all along? (laughs) You mean I've been sitting here looking in the mirror (laughs) and all that was out there? (laughs) Oh, what a great image. I'm holding that one. I'm going to put my fingers right on that curtain. (laughs) Oh, wow. Um, it was so vivid. It was so vivid. They're there. They have their ships. And here we are on this little planet, so focused on the end of our nose that we can't even see them. That we don't he- see them waving to us. <laughs> <laughs> They're all out there going, hey, here we are. <laughs> Over here. <laughs> Oh, heaven. <laughs> and the ships are lined up forever. There are so many of them. Oh. But I got, when I talked to Sananda earlier today, I asked him, what can we do to help? He told me yesterday when I was talking to him that it's not as easy as we think because of these layers of illusion. Other galactics, the galactics come from other places that are in higher dimensions, most of them. All of them. And their ships are not prepared to get through these layers. 
of dark energies. And he said some tried, and there, you know, there are some ships that are thought forms. They're they're created by the people who who are, you know, the pilots and the passengers. They create their ship with their minds, and they can get caught in the illusions, and they can't find their way out, and their ships can break up. So they need training on how to get through these layers of he described it like it's my picture of it was like if you drop colors into a river these energy waves that are intermingling and uh, crossing each other can be very difficult so oh. this is this is what they're up against and this is what they're training their people to do, to get through the layers of illusion to reach us because they want to, so they need our help. And I said, how about if we start creating pillars of light right where we are or maybe get together, go out into a field, sit in a circle and create a pillar of light so you create coherence in your energy field. That's what we need to do now, is to create coherence in our energy field, the one we generate and the one that we project. And if we all do that, if we all concentrate on doing that, we will ascend in our energies, in our experience, and we will create the coherence that we all need to bring forth the things that we want. The RV is about coherence. It's about seeing others as equal. It's about friendship and reaching out and creating something That will be light for everyone. That's coherence. And we can't accomplish it. They can't accomplish it until we create the energy. Actually, until we stop creating the energy that's incoherent and start creating the flow that is love and light. And then everything will fall into place. Even without their assistance now, we could do it. We can do that to create the coherence that will bring in the RV. They're helping us. They're they're making it happen. And from what I see and from what they see, it's done. But we can bring it closer, faster. Same with the landings. Let's bring them in. Let's create a runway. Let's create the runway they need. Bring them in. (laughs) Okay, you can still hear me, can't you? Yes. Okay. Because some... In many of my conversations recently, every time I get to a point of, okay, we can do this, here we go, it cuts off. (laughs) (laughs) I've had that happen too, so, (laughs) yeah. So they're they're at it, you know, trying to create incoherence. But we're not going to permit it. If we refuse to permit it, You will die a quiet death. We don't have to fight it. We don't have to fight against it. We have to create the love and the pure energy. And then we'll have everything we want. It's nice to have help from the galactics, from 
the company of heaven, and they more than want to help us. But, you know, they're saying their hands are tied if we keep generating these waves of darkness. And so many people, I talked about this earlier, so many people believe they're not doing that. So many people believe that they're really just being light workers when they say, I'm not going to fall for that. Or, I'm afraid I'm being brainwashed here. Or, we have to express our individuality. They think that's being helpful. They truly do. But it is creating the waves of conflict and darkness that energizes the matrix. So we must stop feeding energy to the matrix. Mm. And I, I've said it. Sananda said it. It is done. Here's the torch, everyone. Claim yours if you want. Or walk away if you wish. But that's where we're going. Beyond the curtain. So let us move forward. I've just pulled the curtain aside. It goes 360 (laughs) degrees around us. Okay, I just took the entire curtain down. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Here we <Thank> go. You. <laughs> Here yeah. we go. We don't even need this torch. It's the light is blinding. <laughs> <laughs> Forget the torch. (laughs) That was for the darkness. (laughs) That's why we only need torch and darkness. That's why. (laughs) Right. The light is blinding. We only need to move into it and just bathe in it and keep following the path. It leads to one. We're all being invited to take the path that leads to one. Oh, one is crying. With tenderness and relief. And love. He loves us so much. He, she, loves us so much and just wants us to connect and to be in that higher dimension that we've been promised. It's right there. I love you all. And I'm telling you right now, I am going to walk that path. And I'm not going to stop till I get there. And getting there is in the arms of one. You're all invited. Every soul on the planet is invited. So maybe we'll be the first, the first wave to go. That's okay. People will learn from us. So let's go. We're with you, Catherine, every step of the way. And we're with you, Sananda. And we're with you, one. Okay, so now I'm going to play Sananda's favorite song, 
Well, he changes it every once in a while, but this remains one of his favorites. We are the world. Because the words are just perfect. Life, love, being together. Let's go. See you all Thank there. You. <laughs> See you everyone soon. Yes. So love long. Love you all. Yes, love to everyone. So long. Family and the truth, you know love.